time once again for watching a video together. I must emphasize that this activity should not be taken lightly. There is a huge amount of literature and a lot of resources available online. Of course, in written form and in AV format as well. In pedagogical approaches, in modern times, AV is playing a very important role. Hence, watching videos available online or offline, it is a very good activity for learning. Har kisim ki videos nahi. The videos which have academic content. I must say that this is a cultural change in learning and development. As a typical parent who happens to be a professor, I would sometimes ask my son, who is a university student, Har tum videos hi dekhte rehte hai. Kuch kaam bhi karna, kuch padna bhi hai ki nahi. And the kid would say, I actually learn a lot of things and this is reflected in my grade. And I must say that he is right. There is a lot of material available in your hands if you want to learn about anything, you can use YouTube or there are some other videos available online which could be very useful. For our today's video, we have chosen the topic of suku. We have covered the topic of suku in our modules. Hence, it would be helpful for us to watch a video which is about one aspect of suku and suku structuring and suku usage in Islamic banking and finance. So if you click on this link, you will go to a video which is being presented by a very well-known industry practitioner in Islamic banking and finance. All right, now we have watched this video which is quite interesting. The presenter is making a case which is very valid about suku. The presenter defines a suku structure and classifies it into an asset-based suku and an asset-backed suku. Asset-based suku is the one which does not allow the suku holders, the investors, to have recourse to the underlying asset of suku, i.e., it doesn't allow the investors to get hold of the asset and sell it in case the obligor defaults. So, this is an asset based suku. Asset backed suku, according to the presenter, is the one which allows the sukuk holders, investors to have full recourse to the asset in case there is a default by the obligo. Now, from here, there is an issue of a true sale or a, a non-true sale, a fake sale. In case of asset-based suku, many people say that because it doesn't offer full recourse to the asset, to the investors, this is not a true sale. And the true sale happens only when there is full recourse to the asset given to the investors. This is a valid legal point. Sharia scholars, however, take a different view. 
they say that whether according to law the sale has taken place or not, this is a separate thing. From Sharia viewpoint, whenever there is an acceptance and the documentation has taken place, the seller has uh, received the price and the buyer has given the price, then the sale would happen whether this is recognized in law or not. Ye bilkul isi tarah hi hai ki agar ek aurat aur mard privately nikah kar le, do gawahon ki maujudgi mein ijab qubool ho jaye aur nikah ko register na kiya jaye, to kya nikah ho jayega? From Sharia viewpoint, nikah ho gaya. Similarly, in case of sukuk structuring, whether the underlying asset has been registered with the land registry or not, as long as the purchase price has been paid and the asset has been put into the SPV for the benefit of the sukuk holders, sale would have taken place. So, this is actually the difference between an asset back and asset based suku. In Islamic finance circles, there is an emphasis on having more of asset back suku, i.e., a suku which gives full recourse to the investors in case there is a default. Obviously, there is a disconnect between Sharia views and the legal stance on this issue. There is a need to come up with harmonization of Sharia views and legal implications.